All right, before I get to my next guest, Tom Patry, and you know, folks, Tom is an absolute gem. I, I, I want to remind you about one of our good friends, and it's they're, they're over at Positive Vibes Golf. Check them out online at PositiveVibesGolf.com and give them a follow on Twitter at PVibesGolf. Their head covers and putter covers are a very unique way to keep your mind focused on positive thoughts. Talking about that a lot on the show tonight, right? Keep your mind positive. It's a great course training aid to, you know, just to do just that. When you look at them, you see them, you can't help but have a smile on your face and keep your mind in the right place and in uh, playing great golf and feeling good about yourself and, and moving on to the next shot, whatever that is. Go check out what I mean. Check out their putter covers. Check out their head covers online at PositiveVibesGolf.com. All right, now back with me here on the French Lick Resort guest line is what I like to call, start calling him now is our resident director of golf instruction, Tom Patry. Tom is a Golf Tips Magazine Top 25 instructor. He served this summer as the director of instruction at the Hawthorns Golf and Country Club up in Fishers, Indiana. Shortly, he'll be headed back down to his home, his winter home in Naples, Florida, for his winter residency. Go visit him at Esplanade Golf and Country Club to sign up for golf lessons and, and, you know, a myriad of things that Tom does. Check out his website, TomPatry.com. Subscribe to his newsletter while you're on there. And like I say, get yourself ready for winter golf by getting some lessons and uh, getting that all teed up for yourself. He should be back down there in the not-too-distant future, and I'm always glad he is a part of this show. Good evening, TP. How are you, my friend? Chrissy boy! <laughs> How are you, TP? Unbelievable. Well, before I get too unbelievable, I, I just want to give a shout out to all my friends in South Florida, Chris, and, and especially to our friends over in the Bahamas. I've just been watching the TV all night here, and, and, the, and the film and the pictures from from the Bahamas is just, it, it, it just rips your heart out. It's just unbelievable what those folks have gone through, and, and it's, it's, a, it's not pretty at all, and I, I can't even imagine when the smoke clears how many people there have lost their lives, and and as this thing barrels up the east coast of Florida and heads towards Charleston, I, I just I just hope all our friends on the coastline are, are being smart about what they're doing. Yeah, smart and safe, and let's let's hope it uh, it uh, just skirts the coast and goes back out to sea, and and everyone can get on with their lives safe and healthy. But yes, absolutely, prayers and thoughts to everybody uh, that's been along this path. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully when the you, when you the know, dust Chris, all settles. We can yeah, rebuild. You know, I've, I, I've, uh, I've been in four of them and, um, and, and sat through four of them, uh, two on the East Coast and two on the West Coast of Florida. And, and for people that aren't from Florida or don't understand hurricanes, they just don't understand the intensity and the power of these things. And it's just, uh, it's, it's just, it's just incredible the damage they can do and, and the light they can take in an instant. Yes, no doubt. Tom, um, Lot to get into with you tonight, and I, I want to start. You know, here we are. Tour championship is now in the rear view, and and years gone by, right? Then we we'll talked a little bit about this with Tim Simpson, but you know, we start to get into silly season here, right? The skins game would happen. We'd have the Wendy Three Tour challenges, the stu- the shark shootouts, those sorts of things. But now we have a wraparound season. So the 2020 season <laughs> starts. Oh, by the way, next week up at the Greenbrier. What do you think about the wraparound concept? Good, bad, too much of a good thing. What do you think? Yeah, Chris, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I just, I, I think we talked about this once before, but we, we talked a little bit about players not getting a break and players not being home and being able to decompress, players not being with their family, players not being able to rest their bodies. For the young players, putting a lot of pressure on them to perform right away and, and get, a, get a quick start and just have no downtime. The kids that came off the Corn Ferry Tour and, and got their cars now are jumping right out there right away. They've just come from their tour championship, basically, and now they're jumping into the Greenbrier, the ones who have cards now, and they're, they're you know, they're just under the gun right away again without any breather. I, I don't, you know, I understand why it happens. Money drives the vehicle, but I, I don't like the fact that these guys don't have any downtime and don't have any time back home and time to decompress. Um, I'm not a big fan. I was a huge fan of the silly season. I thought the Skins game was fun. The shark shootout basically still goes on in Naples, Florida every year. It's it's a fun event. Um, you know those types of things were, were always fun. I, I you know I, I always look forward to Thanksgiving weekend putting the skins game on. You know and and seeing Arnie and Jack right. and then it became it became Freddie and you know and Trevino played and you know that was a fun thing to watch. I looked forward to that and it wasn't really serious golf but it was fun golf and it was 
it was kind of our, our downtime to kind of decompress and smile and kind of laugh a little bit and have some fun. And we don't really have that anymore. And, and uh, I, I, I miss that myself. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm too old fashioned. Maybe I don't understand the X's and O's and the, and the dollars and cents, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the wraparound at all. So Tom, looking ahead to a little bit later this week on Friday, voting closes for the PGA Tour Player of the Year award. And there are four nominees. You got Brooks Kepka who won three times, including the PGA Championship for a second year in a row, who also got Player of the Year honors from the PGA of America, from your, from your peers, right? Voted him uh, their Player of the Year. And, of course, they would because he won back-to-back PGA Championships. But he also won a WGC event in Memphis, finished second at the Masters in the U.S. Open, fourth at the Open Championship. So three wins, three second-place finishes, nine top tens, and 21 events. You got Rory McIlroy also nominated, who won the Players' Championship. We know he won the Tour Championship and the FedEx Cup. He also won the Canadian Open. He finished second earlier this year at the WGC in Mexico. So he's had 10 top 10 finishes in 19 events. And then you've also got a couple other guys nominated, Matt Kuchar and Xander Schauffele, who both had nice seasons, but there's no way either one of those guys is going to win. So who do you think? Who deserves the PGA Tour Player of the Year, Rory or Brooks? Well, I think it comes down to Chris. You know, do you put do you put more weight on major championships, or do you put more weight on consistency? Uh, you know, Rory had an incredible year. I mean, to have that many top tens and that few of number of events, and win the Players Championship and win the FedEx Cup, um, <laughs> is a pretty special year. Uh, and then and then Brooksy goes out and, and has a heck of a year in majors, but really, you know, with the exception of the WGC. He was a little, you know, not, um, I wouldn't say he was absentee, but, you know, from a consistency standpoint, week in and week out, he didn't really do what Rory did. So, do you, you weigh, do you weigh the ma- majors heavier or do you weigh consistency long-term, long-term golf, you know, heavier? I, I, I it's a toss-up. It's a, it's a hard one. Uh, the PGA of America, you know, you know, <laughs> had to vote, had to vote Brooks in because of the two PGAs, right? They, you know, you know, that was a slam dunk. That wasn't going to, that wasn't going to happen any other way. You know, the guys out there, they'll make the right choice. You know, they're out there week in and week out. The players will vote on this. and They, they, they know what goes on week in and week out and, and who who's played in their mind the best golf. So I trust them to vote the right guy in. And whoever they vote in, I'm good with. Because, again, they're out there week in and week out. And they see these guys. They play alongside them. And, and they, know, they, they know who's played the best golf overall for the course of the year. So I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And, you know, I wouldn't even mind. If they're in, you know, if there was a co, there's a co-player of the year. If, if they voted them both, you know, I mean, could it happen? I don't know if that even mathematically can happen that they can do that. But, uh, but they both had crazy good years in, in different ways. Uh, and, and they both made golf very exciting again. I think, you know, Kepka, you know, is, is very exciting. Every time you turn on a major, you're looking to see what he's going to do. And, and Rory's kind of, you know, reinvented himself here a little bit this year and gotten back on track. Um, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. So I, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, Chris. What do you think? Um, if if I had a vote, I would vote for Brooks. I mean, I I'm a I'm a majors sort of guy, you know. And and to your point, every time yes, we're watching are. a major, yes, he's the guy we're looking to see where's where's he at. And you know, and by his own admission, right? Earlier this year, he doesn't. You know, when you see him playing golf and it's not a major, it's when he's playing in a tournament, he's not practicing. He's not doing other things. He's only practicing for majors. But yet again, three wins. You know, nine top tens. Not bad. So yeah, oh, yeah. I, I would yeah. I would lean Brooks's way. No, so I, I have no and I have no. If that goes that way, I have no problem with that. I think I think uh, you know I, I think when you look back ten years from now, historically, you look back at Rory's year and say, how did he not be? How is he not player of the year? You know. But I mean. The, the, you're right. I mean, I think the majors are majors and they're special. I think I, I don't like the fact that WGCs and I don't like the fact that the FedEx Cup has taken weight off majors. I don't like that. I think I think the weight should be on the majors. I think the point system should favor the majors. Uh, I think majors are majors, and I, I don't think you know with the schedule as compressed as it is now, Chris, with you know a major every month and, and a WGC thrown in there, and then you have the FedEx Cup points going on. I, I just think it's too much. I just think there's too much going on there. I think it, it detracts from the majors a little bit, and, and I don't like that. So I, I'm with you on, on on majors being majors and being important. I, I I understand that opinion, and I respect it 100%. 
Tom, I, I want to get your thoughts on a couple of team competitions that we have coming up here over the next few weeks, right? We have we got the President's Cup, and then we got the Solheim Cup. And let's start with the President's Cup. And the question that's sort of out there on everyone's mind, is Tiger Woods going to pick himself as one of his captain's picks? So do you think Tiger did enough with his win at the Masters to deserve to be a part of the team? No, I, I don't think so. I, 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 and I would be very surprised if he picked himself. I think that would be... I'm not sure if that's good PR at all, and I don't think I think he realizes that you know the second half of the season he was he was basically absentee. You know he had a couple of nice finishes, but nothing special, and and for periods of time there he disappeared, and 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 you know and and didn't play very well really by his standard or by or by tour standards. Uh, listen, you can't take anything away from that Masters victory. It was special. It was an unbelievable moment in golf history. It was the comeback we all kind of waited for. Um, you know, he was the knight, and he was the knight on the white horse, running in and, and saving the day. You know, and, and picking golf up off its off the off the mat and putting it back up on on the pedestal again. So, you know, I, I think that uh, the master you can't take anything away from the Masters victory, but you know, I, to pick himself as a Presidents Cup player and captain um, based on the second half of his year alone, I, I just don't think he can do it now. Let's talk about the Solheim Cup, and that's coming up and, uh, at Glen Eagles over in Scotland, and it's the LPGA's version of the Ryder Cup, U.S. versus Europe. But it, it isn't the U.S. and the European players out there dominating the LPGA Tour. It's more the Asian players. So would it be better, Tom, to have like a U.S. versus Asia sort of cup, or is it really time to have sort of a President's Cup version for the on the women's side so that you can get and a U.S. versus the world, which obviously I think would be dominated by Asian players. Well, if you had U.S. versus the world, it would be dominated by Asian players, and, and namely mostly Korean, um, which which I think would be a, a, a great a great thing for women's golf. I mean, it's a, and I think it should be this should be that a Presidents Cup for women it should you know give it some credibility right away and 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 expose the great players that they are to the world. Um, I wouldn't like the American team's chances in that competition very much. Uh, just the opposite of what we're seeing on the men's side. The men's side in the President's Cup, you know, we, we kind of dominated the competition. And I don't really understand why, quite frankly, Chris. I mean, because you look at the world team, you know, both both present and past, they've been very, very talented squads, and they, they can't get out of their own way. And I don't really understand that. Um, but I think it's time that, you know, the, the girls have, have a version of that and, and they play against the world team. I think, I think they'd be great for women's golf. So speaking of great for golf, so just to touch on what you just said, you know, going back to the President's Cup on, uh, for the men. If the, if the world team won, right? I mean, we just got dominated right in the Ryder Cup last year by the European team. If the world, if yes, the world did. team jumped up and beat the U.S. team, what would that do to to U.S. golf? No, well, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, you know, listen, I, I I've been a big proponent for a long time. That it's not a U.S. game anymore, Chris. It's it's a world game. I mean, look at the look at the ladies' tour. Look at look at the Korean players. Look at look at Europe. Look at what Europe's produced in the last twenty years. Look at who's come out of Australia. You know, look, look who's now coming out of starting to come out of China. Uh, uh, the game has changed. It's, it's, you know, it's not, we, we dominated this game for so long and we caused, in, in a good way, world popularity. So we should really embrace that. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, and, and by the way, it, it wouldn't surprise me if we got beat. It wouldn't surprise me at all. That, that team, if you look at the lineup on that team on the other side, it's pretty damn good. Um, so I don't think it would be an upset in any way. I mean, they're great, great players. But, um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we've got a strong team as well, and I, and I hope I hope they I hope the USA prevails. I'm, I'm obviously pulling for the USA, but uh, it's a world game, Chris. It's changed the whole the whole the whole landscape of golf is now different. But you don't think that a a loss by the US team after getting trounced by the Europeans last year in the Ryder Cup, and then coming in and losing to the Presidents Cup, doesn't send the PGA Tour kind of reeling on its heels? No, I really don't, Chris. I, I, I just think, like I said, it was, uh, first of all, I think the Ryder Cup being played overseas as it was last year, right on the heels of the Tour Championship, you know, right at the end of the season when our best players had played basically three or four weeks in a row 
and then get on the plane and fly to Europe and, and fly, fly to France and 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 at a venue they really didn't know. I, I think they almost were the sacrificial lamb in, in some respects. Um, I think it goes again. It goes right back to what you said about the wraparound season. I think the tour has compressed too many things into too short a period of time that these guys are exhausted. They're 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 done. They're spent. They they you know they shot their last bullet. It's over. You know that, that tour championship ends, and they were so pumped up for the FedEx Cup and the playoffs. So now they're going to get on a plane and, and fly and do a team competition in France, and they, you know, they, you know, or they, they were asleep, man. They were done. They were out cold. I mean, I, I, I didn't like, I didn't like the mojo going in. And now, now listen, if there'd been a month in between and they had a month of downtime, they they had gone home and rested and relaxed a little bit and, and recharged their battery. You know, I'm, I'm, I think the outcome could have been different, but but it wasn't different. And, and the schedule. The schedule really has to be really looked at really hard. I think we're really making a huge mistake. There's just no downtime. Tom, before I let you go, I, I, I got to get a playing lesson from you. And one of the things that we talked about I'm gonna, tonight, I'm gonna, and I'm going to I'm I'm charge you. I'm going to charge you just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so I was talking to Tim Simpson at the top of the show, and it's something that you know you've sort of alluded to throughout. The, our conversation around mental capacity and, and quieting of the mind and, and, and that sort of thing. Tim talked about how that's one of his, you know, regrets about uh, his career from a putting perspective is he had a quiet mind on the tee and in the fairway, but once he got on the green, his mind lit up like a candle and, uh, and all of a sudden all the thoughts that were going through there and then that sort of thing. And you're a great putter. And you always were, you know, through the course of, you know, the time that you've been playing professionally and, and you're one of the great teachers of a putting stroke. How do you, how do you train your teacher, like your junior players and even the adult players to keep your mind quiet so that it doesn't get in our way and we don't start second guessing ourselves and, you know, ooh, do you can't miss this one and all that sort of thing. How do you keep the mind quiet when you're putting? Because I think that's a really, really good question. A great question, actually. And I, it's something that's dear to me. I mean, I, I'm a big, big believer in process and pre-shot routine. Uh, you know, probably the best pre-shot routine you've ever seen in golf belonged to a guy named Jack Nicholas. Um, and, and I don't know if you remember him, but he was pretty good. Um, I've heard of him. Made more, and, 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 you know, and if you look back at Jack's career, you probably wouldn't call him a great putter, but you probably would call him a great oh. clutch putter. You know, when it really mattered, when <laughs> When it really came down to the nitty gritty, he held that 10 footer, he held that 12 footer, he held that 6 footer. And if you looked at a guy and watched him go through his routine over the course of his, his long career, and I'll bet you if you took a, a film of his pre-shot routine in 1963 and took a, pre a film of his, of his pre-shot routine in 1986 and you put it side by side and digitized it, it'd probably be exactly, exactly the same. It would probably have taken the same amount of time the same steps, his body movements would be, you know, almost, you know, mirror-like, if you will. I mean, that was, I think that was kind of Jack's cocoon. He got in that cocoon and it shut the whole world out. That was his process and he went through these exact steps and he dialed himself in and the world could have been exploding around him and he wouldn't have known it. And I think that if you watch guys under pressure, um, especially younger players, even really good younger players, you know, they get a little jumpy coming down the stretch. They, they, they skip steps. They rush things. You know, they, they come out of their posture. They, they, they don't really go through the exact same routine leading up to two and reading the putt and, 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 and addressing the golf ball. There's variabilities in their routine. And, and, and I think that that's, that's going to destroy you every time. You've got to have a great process to be a great putter. Tom, before I let you go, remind our listeners once again. How they can stay up to date with all the great things that you're doing on your website and sign up for your, your, uh, your newsletter. Sign up for lessons coming up this, uh, this fall and winter down in Naples and also follow you on social media. I got one thing before I do that though, Chris. So you mentioned right. um, Charlie's last interview that he was at Sirenoi and the 1916 PGA was played at Sirenoi. Chris. Yes. For a free playing, for a free playing lesson with Tom Patry. Who won the 1916 first PGA at Silenoy? Do, no, do I get up. to answer that question or? 
you, you get to answer that question, but no looking. Don't be looking it up on me now. No, I'm not. You. It's Jim Barnes. I can see you. Jim Barnes won. Jim Barnes. You, there you go. Free playing lesson for you. That's it. You're in. <laughs> Free playing lesson. Long, long Jim Barnes. I got, I got, a, I got a follow-up question. Where was Jim Barnes in Westchester County, New York, not far from Sinai, the head professional for a number of years? Ooh. Oh, now you got Ooh, me. That's, Where? I got, I got a five. Tell him Country Club. Tell him Country Club. Tell him right Country Club. Tell him Country Club. Break down the road from Sinai. There you go. So there's your trivia for the night. So I'll still give you the playing lesson. You got the first part right. I'm, I'm, still, I'm not going to take that back. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to that now. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. You earned it. So, all right. Chris, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all those places, um, obviously. And then my website is just simply tompatry.com. Um, and on that website, it, is, it hosts my uh, my V1 Online Video Academy, where people can connect, can connect 24 7, 365. They need some analysis of the golf swing. And, uh, and you know, you know, Golf Tips Magazine, obviously, I'm a, I'm a big part of that that family, which I'm very proud of. So we're in a lot of different places, and it's really easy to find me if you want to. Uh, maybe too easy, maybe too easy. Um, but we, we, we you know, we're, the exposure that all of us get because of somebody like you and what you do for the game, Chris, is, is far more important than what we do. You, you bring this, you know, this show every week across the airways and, and, you know, in, in, in multiple mediums and, and what you've done for the troops overseas and broadcasting is just fantastic. And, and, uh, we, we, we always should be thanking you, not you thanking us. No, that's not the case, but I appreciate you saying that. I got I got a quick question about your, your website real quick. Again, TomPatry.com. What's the golf course in the background on your uh, on your homepage? Is that Esplanade? No, that the, with, with the ocean right there? Yeah. Are you talking about the ocean? <laughs> that's Punta Cana. Punta Cana, okay. In the, in the, in the, in the one, you're talking about with the one that's alongside the sea? The picture with the alongside the ocean? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Punta Cana, so... So a couple of years ago, we did a, a trip for 40 people. I took 40 students to Punta Cana, and uh, my longtime great friend and great player and great PGA professional, Jay Overton, who played in, I don't know, he probably played in 15 majors as a club pro, is now the director of golf down at Punta Cana. He invited us down for, for five days down there with a bunch of people. We had a blast down there, and that picture was uh, – was from the Corrales course down there, where they play a PGA tournament, as a matter of fact, the Corrales course. It's a fantastic Fazio golf course right on the ocean. And if you get a chance, uh, uh, any listeners out there, any of your listeners, if they contact me via my website and they want to get in touch and, and get a little extra special treatment, Jay, uh, Jay's done some great things for people I've sent down there. It's a wonderful place, and he's a wonderful host. And, and Jay's probably 70 years old now. I might, I might, be, get, I might get, be getting in trouble saying that, but he still really plays nicely. I mean, like, really nicely. Um, it's a great place. Great place. Well, Tom, thank you so much for coming back on the show again. Look forward to getting back together with you in a couple of weeks. In between now and then, my friend, all the best to you and your family. Chris, love being on with you, pal. You're the greatest. And, uh, yeah, I'm on here anytime you want. You know that. And, uh, and let's all say a prayer tonight for all the folks on the, uh, in the Bahamas on, and on the East Coast of the U.S. Indeed. Take care, my friend. We'll catch up soon. Thanks, pal. Good night, pal. See you, Tom. That's a great Tom Patry. P-A-T-R-I. TomPatry.com is his website. Go on there, sign up for his, uh, for his newsletter, and then, uh, you have an opportunity there to try to schedule some time, uh, time with Tom when he is back down in Naples at Esplanade. Uh, you can't go wrong, folks. The guy knows absolutely everything there is about the golf swing. He's a, he's a wonder, he's always been a wonderful straight driver of the golf ball. He's a great putter. And he's going to really fix your game. So go check it out. And like, if you can't get down there, right? You got the V1 piece. Send him a video. Let him take a look at at, uh, at your swing via via video, and uh, get some tips back from him about how you can you know change it up. And you don't have to go all the way down to Naples. So for all the folks around the country that can't get there, yeah, you can. You can get there via video. So send him a video and let him take a take a peek at that as well. All right, folks, time for me to put a bow on this edition of Next on the Team. My sincere thanks go out once again to Tim Simpson, Charlie Fisher, and Tom Patry for joining me tonight. Please check out our website, nextonthetea.net. You can keep up to date with what our guest schedule looks like on there. Please also check us out on a couple of websites. Our good friends over at Podbean. Can't thank those folks enough for doing you know, what wonderful partners they are. We've been featured 
on their app and online there several times. And we can't thank them enough for, for their uh, support of the show, podbean.com. Go, in, go there. Just type us in in the search, uh, right there in the search bar. Next on the T, you'll be able to stream or download any of our archive episodes for free right there. And we also link to them on our website, nextonthetea.net. Check us out on launchpaddm.com and click the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate that as well. Doing great things over there uh, with Launchpad, so we appreciate their support as well. You can stream us on a lot of other sites if you have Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audioboom, Player.fm, uh, Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Play. Anywhere you're streaming podcasts, you'll be able to find us there as well. Check us out on Facebook, Next on the T with Chris Mascara. Let me know if you've got a question that you would like me to ask on your behalf to any one of our guests, whether it's a future guest or a previous guest. Comment right there on the Facebook page. We'll be sure to get that question answered for you as well. Folks, as always, we can't thank you enough for making us a part of your golfing content. We really appreciate you very much. Until next week, hit them straight, my friends. on the G with Chris Mascaro, where PGA and LPGA pros and top instructors and media members go to tell their stories. Join us the same time every Tuesday to hear more stories about the game we love from people who love sharing those stories with you. It's all about the great game of golf. It's all about 